I think in the, the sector of um, uh, ICT and in order to uh, encourage development of mobile broadband, we need public policies that encourage investment and innovation. So wh why investment? Well, first of all, everybody says there's 7 billion uh, mobile connections in the world. So you would think everybody has access to mobile. But if you look at individual users, men and women, it's actually 3.3 billion uh, people who have access to mobile. So that's less than half of the world's population. So we're quite far away from uh, really have everybody having access uh, to mobile. So we need to encourage uh, deployment of services for people to have access to mobile. And then also uh, there's a huge growth of mobile data traffic. Uh, Cisco says uh, it will grow by 13 uh, fold uh, in the next five years. Uh, so you really need to encourage investment. And then you need to encourage innovation uh, because mobile is going to change um, a whole range of other sectors, health, education, transportation, uh, and, and so you need to encourage investment there. To encourage investment in the sector, I mean, mobile depends on spectrum, yes, and, and on spectrum that will enable uh, both uh, uh, an important amount of data to be carried and also uh, that enables uh, rural coverage in, in rural areas. And, and for that, we need to make more spectrum available and we need to make spectrum below one gigahertz because that's the spectrum uh, that enables the rural coverage uh, available to the industry. And that means digital dividends because a lot of that spectrum is actually being used by analog TV and, and as you refarm, uh, you need to make that below one gigahertz spectrum available for mobile. Uh, and then you need to do it in a way uh, that uh, balances uh, the, the short-term price uh, that, that uh, operators will pay for auctions with uh, the uh, need that they have to invest on the long term uh, for 15, 20 years in deploying the networks. So you need the licenses to be set, uh, the, the license auctions to be set in, in a fair and balanced way and you need to have uh, a presumption of renewal and, and things like that. So there's a number of things you can do on spectrum and, and auctions and licenses. And then you also need to uh, avoid having sector specific taxes uh, because these taxes will one increase the prices for consumers so that that goes against your objective of inclusion and also they will deter investment. So th those are the two things, spectrum uh, uh, licenses uh, and then avoiding sector specific taxes. Innovation is, is uh, actually many, many fold uh, in, in enabled by mobile. Uh, so it can be mobile health services, it can be uh, smart meters, it can be connected cars, it can be mobile financial services. And so uh, as, as I mentioned, these sectors, they all have different stakeholders in, in policy making. So you have your financial regulator, you have your health minister, you have your education minister. And that means that they all need to talk uh, with uh, the telecoms and ICT minister and regulator and they need together uh, to work on what are the um, uh, best policies for the sector. It, it means uh, regulation and, and policy making needs to be much more cross-sector to enable that transformation of other industries. We, we also need, uh, uh, I think, in the area of privacy, which is a very, very important area for consumers, uh, we need to make sure we have the right policies uh, and we balance, of course, protection of, of consumers and, and their private lives uh, and also the innovation that, that we want to do in, uh, in that sector. So that means we need to have uh, regulation on privacy that cuts across all, all the sectors. There's many wonderful examples of, of how mobile can uh, uh, innovate together with other sectors. So let me uh, uh, give you a few. I'll, I'll try to give you maybe three. Um, one in Africa, uh, in, an initiative called MCOPA. And that's very simple. That's um, uh, uh, power, a solar-based solar panel uh, with a mobile SIM card. 
and that's something that you can take home uh, and you pay as you go uh, with the SIM card and, and you get access to energy uh, and you're able both to um, use the light that comes with it and also maybe recharge your mobile phone. Uh, and that provides uh, people in, in Kenya, in this case, uh, with energy that is affordable. It's the same price or lower than kerosene. Uh, and it's also clean uh, and renewable. So that's one of the wonderful examples we have in, in the sector of energy. Um, I can give you uh, an example uh, in uh, South Korea. Uh, of using NFC or, or contactless services where your phone enables you to uh, validate your tickets for public transport or, or pay so you can uh, uh, with your phone do a number of the things that you would do with either a paper ticket or a credit card. That's another wonderful innovation. And the third example I'd like to mention is mobile health. Uh, and uh, I'd like to mention a specific initiative, uh, a bike ride that we organized between uh, Brussels and Bas Barcelona just uh, uh, last week to raise awareness on diabetes. So this bike ride, uh, it, it was actually people with diabetes that were riding uh, and, and they had mobile enabled sensors to monitor their uh, blood uh, sugar levels uh, and, and so that they were able to do this very uh, heavy physical exercise but still be okay and have the right levels of insulin to enable them to do that. And I think that's a, a wonderful example.